Today we're going to be talking about the physical properties of metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. Now, that may sound like a very specific group of items, but in truth, these three categories, metals, nonmetals, and metalloids, this comprises everything in the known universe, the known physical universe, because the entire periodic table is either going to be a metal, non-metal, or a metalloid. Everything on the periodic table. So let's check out the physical properties of all these things. Let's start off this discussion of the physical properties of everything on the periodic table by first identifying what exactly a physical property is. Remember that a physical property can be observed without changing the substance itself. Okay, so this is unlike chemical properties which can only be observed during a reaction. The first property we're going to look at that metals have is this shiny luster, all right? A shiny luster means that it reflects light, it will glitter, it might sparkle, or it's got a glossy finish. Shiny luster is what we think of when we think of metals. Metals are always reflective of light, they shine, and so this is one of the first things we think of as a characteristic of a metal. The next characteristic or physical property that we're going to look at of metals is that they are malleable. A malleable material is one that can be pounded into shapes. Malleability is, is the aspect that we're looking at here. We see a, a picture of aluminum foil um, and that's aluminum can be pounded into this flat um, material that we think of as aluminum foil. That's because it is malleable. Another characteristic of metals is that they are ductile. When something is ductile, that means that we can stretch it into thin wire. So um, think of a duct as the space or the tubing where um, air is carried like above your heads in this building. We've got ductwork that's carrying the, uh, the, the heated and cooled air. And because a duct is round, when we say something is ductile, that means it's like a round object. Okay, um, So something that's ductile can be stretched into a thin wire. Another very useful characteristic of metals is that they are conductive. When something is conductive, that means it allows heat and electricity to easily pass through it. So metals are conductors. That's why we use them for wire, to carry electrical signals, to carry uh, electricity, to carry sound signals. It also conducts heat very well. You can see the picture there. If you're holding a bar over a flame, that heat is going to be conducted through the molecules of that bar to your skin. Uh, if you were holding something that wasn't metal, the temperature would not conduct so well. The last physical property of metals that we're going to look at is that they are magnetic. Magnetic means that they are either attracted to magnets or they can be made into magnets. So um, most metals are capable of being magnetized, but not all. There are some metals that are not magnetic, but most are either magnetic or can be made into magnets. Now take about 30 seconds with your partner next to you and list five things in the room that are metal.
Now let's talk about the nonmetals. In the picture on the board up here, you see that the nonmetals are the orange elements. Okay, most of them are over on the far right. One, which is hydrogen, is up on the upper left. Those are nonmetals. The physical properties of nonmetals all are that they have a dull luster. They're not shiny. They cannot conduct temperature or electricity very well. They are brittle. They will break apart. And they're not ductile. You cannot pound them into, uh, into a wire or, or form them into a wire. If we're talking about nonmetals, we note that most of the nonmetals are actually in the gas form. Uh, they're gaseous. So we've got hydrogen, helium, neon, argon. Those types of substances are gases. But some, like carbon and sulfur, are in the solid form. So they're gaseous and solid. Now, with your partner, take about 30 seconds and list five things in the room that are non-metal. Now we're going to take a look at the metalloids. Metalloids are located on the periodic table between the metals and the nonmetals. And on this picture that you're looking at here in this presentation, you'll see that they are drawn in purple. And you'll see that there aren't very many of them and that they kind of straddle this line between the green and the orange. And uh, it's kind of a staircase look there. Uh, those are the metalloids. Metalloids, owing to their location on the periodic table, but more because of the way they're chemically built, they have properties of both metals and nonmetals. So in the next slides, we're going to see a little bit more about metalloids and why they're so special and unique. Metalloids are very unique in the elements found on the periodic table. Metalloids have uh, properties of both metals and nonmetals, and what that means is that they can be used in very unique ways. For instance, silicon, Si, is a metalloid. Silicon is brittle, like a nonmetal, but it conducts electricity like a metal. And because of this very unique property, uh, we have learned to use silicon in very interesting applications. First of all, uh, we use silicon in computer chips. It is also an ingredient in glass and sand as well. Now, uh, just to be clear, when we say silicon, Silicon is the element that's spelled S-I-L-I-C-O-N. It is not the material silicone, uh, which we find in these bracelets, these rubbery-like bracelets, or, or the materials that you might find uh, for, for you know, cooking mitts that are made out of silicone, things like that. Silicone is actually a synthetic composition of many different types of materials put together. Silicone does include silicon in its list of ingredients, but it is a man-made material, whereas silicon is an element. It's a pure element made of only one type of atom. Now take about 30 seconds with your partner and find five things in this classroom that are metalloids.